87th Oscars. Tonight we honor Hollywood's best and whitest, sorry, brightest. This clip was from the 87th Oscar Awards in 2014. Neil Patrick Harris touches on an important issue, but it's brushed off as a joke of a twisted tongue. The topic of underrepresentation in the Asian American community has become a hot topic. Not only are Asian Americans underrepresented, we're misrepresented. This issue has been going on for decades. America in the 1950s saw the rise of communism, the Cold War, and the Civil Rights Movement. But aside from that, it was also the area of James Dean, Elvis Presley, and Marilyn Monroe, timeless icons of the American culture. Our nation reveled in the ever-changing technology of cinema and the introduction of the home television. The new media outlets paved way for modern propaganda as it became much easier to disseminate information. The popularity of the home television made media so much more personal. Almost everyone had a TV set in their living room. Societal standards could now be imposed on people from a box in their living room. Standards such as the nuclear family, a picketed fence suburban home, and the keeping up with the Jonas's ideals became ingrained in the American culture. Among the, among the masses were the, Asian, the growing Asian American population. This community, like the rest of America, knew of and strived for the American dream. What wasn't widely known was the misuse of media to under and misrepresent the APIA community. In the 1950s, Asian Americans were depicted in two different categories. U.S. war propaganda, as well as sexualization of Asian women. Lives of Asian Americans were definitely affected in this period. Americans often have a great form of hatred towards whomever the government is in war, in war with. And oftentimes, one group of Asians would be expanded toward the entire Asian American community. Some effects were as simple as racial slurs to extreme violence. To sum it up, as Hanamoto says, <laughs> Lives of Asian Americans are linked with political, economic relationships between the U.S. and Asian nations. During this period, China gained its independence and North Korea began its war on the South. There was a clear paranoia of communism as well as yellow peril on the front lines. Thus, so many films were set in various Asian countries that were plagued with communism. Among them were I Was an American Spy, Korea Patrol, End of the Sixth Happiness, Peking Express, and Battle Him. I Was an American Spy depicted an American-born Filipina who married an American soldier, who but then later died on the Bataan Death March. Claire, the Filipina, eventually goes on to work as an American spy to spy on the Japanese while she was in the Philippines. However, she eventually gets caught by the Japanese and is later tortured in the end, American soldiers come in and save the day by saving her from the Japanese. With Asian peril on the horizon in the domestic realm, and the true threat of losing countries to communism, American filmmakers sought to boost American morale. They often depicted women of the East as weak and submissive, often falling in love with American servicemen, thus insinuating superiority over their respective nations. From a historical perspective, taking a woman as seen as a victory for the conquering nation. This is depicted in some American films in the 1950s, including Love is a Many Splendored Thing, Japanese War Bride, China Doll, and The Bamboo House. While misrepresentation of the Asian Americans in the 1950s were very rampant in terms of war propaganda, it seems to continue into the 1960s as well but with a new theme added, yellow facing. But we will get into that in the next video. Thank you for watching our video. Please visit our website, apia.multicultural.ufl.edu to find out more about our office and what we do. Stay tuned for our next video coming soon. Silver and gold, you gotta find company, silver and gold.